Okay, we've been practicing doing parenthetical documentation, so now we're going to do our third example of um, practicing this. So who can tell me what's the first step that you do when you've decided what you're, um, you're looking at a works cited page and you're writing your report and it's time to put some parenthetical documentation in. What's the first step, Tyler? Number your sources. So what's the first source, Tyler? Goddess. So put a number one in front of there. What's the second source? Tell me what, read it across, Jacob Jenkins. Okay, there are two NOPs, K-N-O-P-F-E NOPs. There's one for mythology and there's another NOP. What's the title of the third NOP source there, uh, uh, Morgan? Gods and Monsters. So we see for the first time we've not had a source that, or a work cited that has two authors that have two different books. All right, what's the fourth source up here, Tim? Poseidon. Poseidon. And the fifth source, AJ. Okay, so we've got five sources. So now what do we have to do with our sources? What's the next step, Connor? Okay, what kind of source? So we've got Goddess, World Book Encyclopedia, 1982. ED means addition. What kind of source do you think that is? Article. It's not a book, though. It's a little more specific. It is a printed thing, but it's not a book. It's a reference source. But is it online? No, this time we're actually looking at a relic of the past. An actual encyclopedia is sitting in front of you, and you're looking through it. Okay, so this is an article and a reference online, and what do we know about this article from a, uh, I'm sorry, it's not online. I was saying online because it's not. Um, what do we know about this source? Something else that's important, Lily? No author. And that's very common when we're looking at encyclopedias and things. All right, second source. What kind of source is the second one? Uh, Tim, it's a book, and we know about that book. One author. Okay, third source. What do we know about the third one, Michael? It's a, another book, and it's the same author. This is going to be tricky. Book, one author, and it's the same author as source number two. So we're going to have to do something special later on when we do this one. All right. Next one, Poseidon, Greek Mythology, 4 Jan 07, MythWeb, www.mythweb.com. What do you think this one is? What do you think, Tyler? Um, it's an actual website, article on a website. Very good. And what do we know about this article from a website, Jake? New author. And again, that's very common because a lot of people usually go into um, creating in the information for a website. All right, last one. Smith, Mary, and Eric Jones, Major Gods and Goddesses, National Geographic, June 2004, 1819, Sir's Discoverer. What do you think, Lily? It's a magazine article. A little more to it than that, though. It's a magazine article. What else do we know about that magazine article? Uh, does it have one author? It has two authors. There's still something else we need to know about this, this magazine. It's got page numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight them. You circle them. What are the page numbers, Sarah? Okay, that's going to be important later. And the fact that we have page numbers tells us something. Because we have page numbers, I see an HTTP address. That means I found it online. How can I have page numbers on a website. It was printed at one time, so who's holding it for us? What do we put up here? What did we say we put when we find a magazine article? Because we don't have it in print. It's on a database. Remember that place that stores information for us? It's on a database. All right, very good. So we've got all five sources. We know what kind of source that it is. Now we have to figure out what are we going to put in parentheses when we actually go to write our report. So let's go back up to source one. We've got an article and a reference source, no author. 
What should we circle or highlight for this one? What do you think? Janine? Goddess. And when we put goddess in parentheses, what do we have to remember to do to make it correct? Janine? So I want you to exaggerate those quotes. Make them really big so that you remember later on to put them in there. All right, next one. We've got a book by one author. What, do we, what have we done with a book with one author? Michael? Last name. Knopf. K-N-O-P-F-E. All right, how about number three? Book by one author. What are we going to put in parentheses? Uh, Cameron? Last name. But now we see a problem. What's going to be the problem? Tyler? They're the same author, so how will I know which source your information came from? You're going to have to put a little something extra this time. What extra thing do you think we should put here, Andy? The title. So for this one, you're going to put Knopf. You have to put Knopf first and then mythology. And for this one, you're going to put Knopf. And then you could shorten that to just gods. There's no similarity between those titles. So we can just put the first word. You're not going to put any punctuation between them. You're just going to put the last name and then the title. But when you write the title, what are you going to have to remember to do to it? And I actually did it up here for you. I shouldn't have. Joey, you have to underline it. So I want you to underline it right now. Exaggerate it so that you don't forget. Because that seems to be our problem, is remembering to underline our titles. All right, next one. Poseidon Greek mythology. We said it's an article on a website. What do you think we should put in parentheses here? Um, Morgan. Poseidon. Keep calling on the same people. Need some other random hands up here. All right. And then the next, oh, sorry, one more thing, Morgan, that we have to do to this one. Quotation marks, so exaggerate them now so that you remember to put them in there. All right, and then we've got a magazine article and a database with two authors. Jenny, what do you think? Smith, the word and, notice it's not the number sign, is Smith Mary's first or last name? Last name. So we want to be consistent. Which one's the last name over here? Jones. Jones. So it's going to say Smith and Jones. And then which of these are we going to need to put a page number with? There are several that need a page number. So let's go put the number sign in front of them to remember that. Lily? Number five. And it gives us the page numbers for that one. What are the page numbers? 18 through 19. Which other sources are going to need page numbers? Connor? Why two? And you're, when we do our paragraph, you're going to make up your page numbers because you actually aren't really doing the research. We're going to pretend. What other one is going to need page number, Sarah? Three. Number three. Why? Because it's a book. All right. Guess what you're going to do now? What are you going to do now, Andy? Write a paragraph. So let's start on a blank page. We're going to indent. Because this is a paragraph, I don't want a list of five random facts. When you do a report for school, you don't get out a piece of notebook paper and list your facts. You write a report. You put them in paragraphs. You put information together. So let's pretend we're writing a report about a god. Which god do you want to write a report about? Who do we want to write a report about? Jimmy. Aries. Start me off here, Jimmy. And we're going to pretend that this fact came from source number one. And Jimmy, what does it say we have to put in parentheses there? And when we write goddess, what do we have to do? Parentheses and cause, quotes, because it's an article. Goddess, whoops, quote, and parentheses, period at the end. All right, who's got another sentence for me? Something else about Aries. Uh, Morgan. Anyone remember anything about Aries? Um, he 
was the opposite of Athena. And we're going to pretend that this came from source number 2. And so let's look at source number 2. What do we need to put in parentheses? What did we highlight to put in parentheses, Connor? Knopf and and underlined and a page number. Very good. So we're going to put Knopf. Now I want you to look at how I'm doing it so you do yours correctly. Knopf doesn't need underlined. Is it mythology, Connor? Mythology does, but notice there's no comma. It's just a space. And then, Connor, what page did we find this fact about um, Aries? What? We would probably just find out one page. Four. We put a range if a magazine article gives us a range, but if you had the book in front of you, it would just be one page. Gosh, our parenthetical documentation was almost longer than our sentence for that one. All right, you can give me another sentence about Aries. What else can you tell me, Jimmy? Aries was not widely worshipped. Okay, we're going to pretend that this came from source number three. And so who can tell me what am I going to put in parentheses for this one? What goes in parentheses? Look at what you highlighted or circled. Morgan? And? And one more thing. We've got Knopf, God's underline, and we put a little hint at the front of this for us. A random page number. Although when you do your research, it won't be random, right? It'll be true. So Knopf, underline God's, and Morgan, what page did you find this fact on? 80? Okay. Now, I'm going to let you do the last two. So if you don't know any facts about Aries, you can write whatever fact you want to about anything in Greek mythology, school appropriate, of course. And um, when you are done, put your name on it, bring it up, and I will check it. And if it's not perfect, guess what? You have to redo it. All right, good job.